at week five data structures. Today we're taking a look at Speller. Now, in these videos, guys, it's really important. I've already expected that you've gone over everything that's needed of you. So I've expected that you've watched the lectures. I've expected that you've read through these. And for the most part, it's important that you've made some sort of attempt yourself. In this particular file, it wants us to implement load, hash, size, check, and unload. And it also tells us that you can modify dictionary.h and you should modify dictionary.c. Well, in the code that I've done, we're not going to alter dictionary.h. We're not going to change the load, hash, size, check, or unload in the dictionary.h. We are only going to modify dictionary c because I found it was not necessary to recode dictionary.h in any way. Now, guys, listen, I know you hear me say it all the time. It is important that you like. It is important that you comment, even if it's just thanks or thumbs up or whatever. It's definitely helpful if you guys subscribe. All of these things help keep this channel going. They help keep me motivated to make sure that I don't stop halfway through and cut out doing these videos with the opportunity to go back to do problem sets and whatnot. The Discord link is sometimes down. Just shoot me a reminder. I'll update it. It updates every seven days, so I have to update that. It is in my bio if you want to reach out to me directly. Like, comment, subscribe. Let's get started on week five. So in the dictionary function, it doesn't give you a whole lot to go on. In fact, there's a lot we still have to do. It has only C type and studio bool include dictionary.h, which is provided here. Dictionary.h is going to provide you with some of the basic functions that we're going to need to use, and we will use those accordingly. Now there is one kind of confusing to do for me. It says choose the number of buckets in hash table, but it was already there. I don't know if my code imported wrong, but this is the code that should be there. The number of buckets we're using is 26 because we're using the alphabet. So we need 26 different buckets. So that's already done for you. I don't know if there was some sort of mistake there or if mine wasn't supposed to have it, but uh, unfortunately it's there. So that line is already correct. Now, the one thing you'll notice is that there's only two studios plus dictionary.h involved here. I'm going to be using a lot more studios in my code. As we get there, I'll start to explain them as we're using them. And remember, these are in your libraries, right? So that video where I told you where to find the libraries in the short, you should be looking up things in those libraries to make sure there's a shorter way to do your code, which is how we're going to do this. So the first thing we're going to be updating is our technically second to do right here. Returns true if a word is in dictionary, else false, open dictionary, or return null. That's my own. Anything in parentheses is my own note to do. So we need to take an input and output a number of the corresponding bucket and travel through the list. So those are each parenthesis is a separate function. So I've decided to put them all on one line rather than moving them back and forth. So those are going to be the functions that we accomplish in this to do. So let's get started. So first I'm going to need a variable here. I'm going to go ahead and call it hash value. And what that means is I have to declare a hash value up above. So I want to get it outside of this function. So under the hash table here, I'm just going to input here. I want to put functions for future use. And the first one I'm going to go ahead and declare is my unsigned function. And we're going to call it hash value. And now I can go ahead and use hash value down here. And it's going to be hash word and we're going to go to the node and where the cursor is at so we're going to point to the cursor and it's going to be equal to the table of the hash value now again guys some of these i'm not going over right because they were in the lecture in one way so if you have questions about what they are definitely put them in the comments i can explain them further or join the discord the link has been updated as of today and hop in there and ask me why these things mean these things and i'll go ahead and do that so beyond that, we need to travel through the list, right? So while the cursor is not equal to zero, and we need to open our while loop, we're going to do an if loop inside. We need a stir case comp, right? So we need another library here, right? So stir case comp word, and then cursor pointing at the word, right? word equals to zero and so since we use that we're going to go ahead and include the right library to do so so we're going to hop in here and we're going to include strings.h and now we can use our stir case comp so getting back to it if we're pointing out the word we're going to return true and close that out oops let's put that on a new line there we go and then cursor equals cursor pointer next 
we need to inspect the next word, right? And we're going to return false. Before we move on, I'm going to switch this right here. I put a uh, colon instead of semicolon. We're going to get that done. Now we're going to move to hashes word to a number. So improve this hash function. We're just going to improve the hash function that we have here. In order to do that, I'm just going to get rid of this for now. And we are going to do our improved function. So for int i equal to 0, i is less than the str length, right, of the word i plus plus and since we're using str length we need to go back up and we need to include string dot h and I apologize the first one I should have included for str case comp was strings dot h so let me update that and we're gonna also include string dot h now we can use both of those functions str case comp and str length so let's go back down to our function here we were on line 49 and I actually missed something I was supposed to do here so improving this function here we're going to do something called unsigned long right so unsigned long and we're gonna call it total that's gonna to be what it's named we're gonna set that to zero so what unsigned is doing in C is that it's an integer value guaranteed to be at least 32 bits long right uh, unsigned means that the variable can only store non-negative values so it has to be equal to or greater than zero so that's what that is doing there so moving on here we're gonna now use our total value so let's put that there and before I move on let's put this here so we're gonna use our total value in our for loop we're going to put total plus equal to lower of word I and close that out and we're going to return total percent capital N and close that out and the return total percent N so uh, in this case what we're doing is the, the computed it's computed as a sum as an ASCII value of the characters in the word right converted to lowercase so then we take the result N which is the number of buckets that we put into the hash table which effectively is allowing the hash value to be used as an index to our hash table and store and retrieve nodes containing words that have a hash of the same value ie looking it up in the dictionary so let's move on moving down here so load dictionary into memory returning true if successful else false so we need to open the dictionary and return null and read strings create a new node hash the word insert the node f scan if we reach the end of file while loop to create node for malloc so memory allocation of me for memory size and if not open we need to nullify we need to create a variable for word and scan the dictionary for the string through end of file memory allocation else return false and we need to copy that to the node so this is going to probably be one of our larger functions so let's see what that looks like so let's focus on our first parenthesis there it's going to be open dictionary return null read strings create new node hash word insert f scan if we reach the end of file so let's see what that looks like so we're going to uh, file and we're going to point to the file and f open dictionary and quote r for read and if it's not open now we need to nullify it so if file equals null then we need our printf here and we're just gonna put unable to open and we're gonna use the values in the string we've used this one before so percent s backslash n end quote comma dictionary and close that out and we will then return false and we will close this out moving on to our second parentheses we need to create a variable for the word so character word length plus one and then we need to scan the dictionary for the strings through the end of the file right so while and then we'll do f scan f of file and we'll do percent s for the string of the word going through so exclamation equals end of file 
and now we used our fscanf function so we need to include studio.h so we're on line 68 which will become 69 here so let's hashtag include studio.h and go back to our current line so now we need to allocate memory for the file right so we're going to be using malloc so we're going to open our while loop and we're going to do node with a pointer to n as equal to memory allocation so malloc and we're going to use size of here which is one of the things it told us we had to use and so we're going to need another library size of node close that out so now we've used f scan f and malloc which come from two separate libraries so we need to include both of those we're going to include studio.h for our f scan f file and we're going to include stdlib.h for our memory allocation so let's get both of those in so include we're going to do stdlib.h and we also need the uh, s the studio h so include st dio.h and now we can use the fscanf and the memory allocation function or malloc. So now we need our function if malloc returns null it needs to be false. So let's open up after our node here we're going to do if n equals null we're just going to return false. Return false and we'll close that out. Now we need to the last part of this was copy the words from the dictionary into the node. All right? So now we need stir copy and we're going to use the n pointing to the word of word close that out. We're going to use our hash value which we've declared equals the hash of the word and we're going to use next we're going to move them to the buckets like they did in the lecture right so n pointing to next is going to be equal to the table of hash value and then we need table of hash value to be equal to n and now we need a new variable and I'm gonna call it word count word count plus plus and since I'm using a new variable I need to go back up here where I declared hash table so hash value right here and we're going to do unsigned int and we're going to do capital W on word and underscore count. And I'm going to make sure that I continue to code it that way with the capital W. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and change that. We're going to do lowercase just because I'll probably forget that. So let me go up here and change that as well. All right, so we've got that updated. And now we need to return the word count or return zero. So let's see what that looks like. And then before moving on in my code, I'm realizing that I have a couple of things here wrong. So let's move this out. And we're going to tab all of these out. So those should be doing like that because we want all of that should be inside of our while loop, right? Our if, our return, false. And then we should be able to close this after the word count, which will close the while loop. And then we need to F close the file. and we need to return true. All right, so that will close our Boolean values open and close, and that looks good. All right, so return the number of words in the dictionary if loaded else zero, if not loaded yet. So we need to return word count or return zero. So let's see what that looks. So basically, since we have our word count variable now, so it's gonna be if, let's do word count, is greater than zero then we want to return the word count 
and it also wants us to return the zero so we're just going to leave that right there and we have to unload the dictionary from the memory and return true if it's successful otherwise false we've got a couple of notes on here so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create that temporary variable pointing to the first node and then free the temporary pointer after moving the cursor and freeing temporary so let's do four and i equal to zero i greater than n i plus plus and we're going to move the cursor now so node cursor equal to table of i while cursor node temporary location of the cursor when cursors equal to cursor pointer next we need to free temp and we'll close that out let's fix while here and I'm going to switch this to return true. So let's run my first check. Looks like studio.h. I always put the u in there, and that's on me. So it's studio.h. Try it again. This is one of those times where after I've updated it, it still goes wrong. So make speller. So line 29 should be unsigned. And line 56. Looks like line 56 is being impacted by line 54. So let's update that and try this again. There we go. Oh, nope. Then line 29. <laughs> now needs a semicolon which of course it does make speller alright so speller makes now I'm gonna run a style guide on it real quick alright so I've updated all the recommended style let's do it again looks good alright so let's run our check on it here and there you have it speller compiles everything looks good here You've all been awesome. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to comment them or join the Discord. If you comment and you're kind of embarrassed to ask a question, let me answer it and then just feel free to delete your comment. It doesn't matter to me as long as I'm helping you guys out. Like and subscribe. That all helps me out if you guys appreciate these videos. This is CS50. That was Week 5 Speller. I am Devin, and as always, you are awesome. Keep at it. We'll see you guys soon.